Hey friends, my name is C and welcome back to a new video for IGCC Geography and today we have a new video for theme 3 which will look at 3.3 for industry and here are the specifications from the website and in this video we have one case study which is an industrial zone or factory starting with industrial systems so industrial system is similar to the agricultural system where we look into last video where there's an input, process and output and in terms of an industrial system, the inputs include uh, raw materials, labor, and capital, or basically money. And the processes, for example, in the timber industry or in the wood industry, processes might include turning big chunks of wood into smaller size to fit project requirements or to meet demand. So outputs will include the desired product. So there, there will be a desired product that you want or like the manufacture one, the desired product. There'll be a waste product that needs to be thrown away. And then there'll be some byproducts that are basically almost like waste product, but they can be sold to earn more money. So byproduct. So moving on to the types of industry, there are generally three main types of industries. Number one is processing where they basically convert raw materials into finished goods that are of higher value and are in demand. For example, turning uh, a piece of wood into a chair. That's one of the processing industry. And then there's also the assembly industry, where uh, those um, industries put together parts and components to create something that is of a higher value. For example, a car assembly industry. And then thirdly, there's also the high tech industry or high technology where they are often found together in science parks. And high-tech companies produce very advanced products, for example, silicon chips or robots, or basically something related to AI or high technology. Then there are factors affecting the location of industry. So generally, there are two, uh, two factors, physical factor and human factors. And physical factors are split into three different factors or sub-factors mainly site, the, the, the basically the place at which the building or the, the factory is built on. And this is determined by the availability, the size, and the cost of land. And the site is also important because uh, some, uh, some industries or some factories need a, wa a water supply. So in that case, a water supply in proximity is essential for those uh, industries, for example, in paper mills. And raw materials. Proce uh, processing industries that require large raw materials will locate to the raw materials as close as possible to basically reduce on transport costs. So for example, if a mine is right here, like a mining mine is right here, then the industry might just set up a factory like right beside the mine to save on transport costs. And also transport, ports and highways provide easy access to and away from the factory to its desired location. And for human factors, there are capital and government influence, where some areas might have certain government policies that will boost the local area, or they have certain policies that can that attract the companies to move to those area. And there's also labor, where the quality and the cost of labor are taken into account as they aim to hire good quality labor for a low cost. However, this might lead to exploitation in certain parts of the world. And for demand, making a product that is in demand is essential to ensure the goods are in good quality. For example, in the bakery, the baked goods need to be sold or else they'll, be, they'll still spoil. So this basically relates to the supply and demand of, um, of the product. Then there's industrial agglomeration and industrial estate. So here are what these mean. They are big, big words. So industrial agglomeration is the clustering of together of economic activities. So here's a photo of the factories right here. And industrial agglomeration basically allows companies to enjoy the benefits of external economies of scale. And because those companies are grouped together, they cause sort of like the multiply effect where we looked into the last few videos, where if one company succeeds, the rest might also succeed and will attract other companies from the same industry to move to that area. Whereas industrial estate, is an area zone and planned for the purpose of industrial development. 
and they can be found in different areas of the city. For example, in inner city, rural areas, or urban areas, but they are strategically located near transport links so that they can get so that customers can get to those areas, or that there will be good transport links to those areas for transportation. And then we have a case study which will look at an industrial zone or factory, and we'll look at Toyota's Bernison manufacturing plant. So here's some background on what Bernison or where it is. So Bernison is a village located in the city in England called Derby, around 190 kilometers away from London. And there is a Toyota manufacturing plant in Bernison opened in sorry, in 1993. Oops, in 1993. And Toyota is one of the world's largest producers of cars. And the factory in Bernison employs over 2,000 people and has over 200 suppliers, which are mostly from the UK. And Toyota has some factories in the UK, but they chose Berniston to build their manufacturing plant due to a couple of human factors as well as physical factors. And we'll start with human factors. So firstly, there's good transport links or good transport. And this relates to almost, this is basically an overlap of human and physical factors. Where the Berniston plant is located on the junction of these two roads in the UK where they connect to the rest of the country via the M1, M6, and M42 motorways. And these good transport links basically means that it's easy, to, it's easy for the plants to deliver the goods as well as to receive certain parts of the goods or like certain components. And there's also reliable energy in the plant or in the area, which means that this source of reliable supply of energy of, or electricity will co won't cause any issue in the plant. And entertainment. Derby is a town with recreation centers like this sports center, a major football club and shopping center, which means that the workers or the staff working at the Bernison manufacturing plant has some place to grow for their entertainment. Then there's a the multiply effect. So we already looked at the multiply effect in the previous few videos in 3.1 development. So just essentially think of it as a snowball effect or chain reaction. So this is how the Toyota uh, plant in Bernison caused the multiplier effect in the local area. So since Toyota set up the manufacturing plant in Bernison in 1992 or 93, it's between those two, uh, those two years, it has caused the multiplier effect. Namely, there are more developments opened up in that area and the local economy has improved. And this has invited companies like um, these hotels right here to move to those areas in Derby and in Bernison. So a quick summary of what the multiplier effect is, is that, for example, you have one area and imagine a company or like a, in this case, but the Toyota manufacturing plant moves into that area and over time, this company or the Toyota plant gets more famous and it attracts more companies and more manufacturing plants or companies to move into that same area, which causes this area to be more famous and more well known, which causes more companies to move in which causes this chain reaction, where we call it the multiplier effect. And for tariffs, the UK tax for EU and non-EU registered vehicles range from 5% to 20% VAT. And the tax on imports make cars expensive to customers. However, by building a factory in the UK, like by building this Toyota manufacturing plant in Berniston, Toyota avoided these tariffs and can therefore sell their cars at a more lucrative and lower price in the UK which means that the sales will increase. And then we look at physical factors. So there's uh, the physical factors as to why Toyota moved to or like built a factory in Berniston is that there's flat land as the site around Berniston is relatively flat and empty. And there are also greenfield sites in Berniston where this term refers to undeveloped land in, the, in an urban or rural area. So the, the, the manufacturing plant was basically built on this flat land, flat greenfield site. So there's no cleanup cost as opposed to building on a brownfield site, where it basically means there's an existing building already and the company has to either demolish it or work their way around it. And here are the inputs, processes and outputs of the Toyota Bernison manufacturing plant. So the inputs include the manufacturing plant is built on 2.35 million meter cube of land and 1.15 billion pound was invested to build it. And the manufacturing plant has around 3,000 workers 
and the plant also has over 200 suppliers from Japan, UK and Europe. And the processes is quite simple, quite straightforward. It's basically the pressing and shaking of metal panels, painting of car panels, assembling of parts, etc. So this is an assembling industry. And for the output, these car models from Toyota are produced and 15% of them are sold in the UK and 70% of them are sold in Europe and 15% of them are sold worldwide. And that's it for this video. And that's it for this video for 3.34 for industry and I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you need any more learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can type it out in your browser at www.emixeasy.com And that's it for this video and I'll see you all in the next video. Here's to learning made easy.